Hey everyone! So for a while now, my friend Miney and I have been creating these 3D voxel models for a Minecraft map. And we were using Cubic Pro to make these models, but it was very time consuming because Cubic Pro isn't really designed as a voxel editor. So it took a lot of time and we were trying to think of a better way and I came up with this other way of making voxel models, still using Cubic Pro. Um, but it's a lot quicker in the long run, so I thought I'd share it with you guys. Um, but before we go into any of that, I just want to show some of the cool models that we've made so far. So first of all, here are a few of the pickups we've got. So we've got a red heart, a gold heart, copper coin, silver coin, and gold coin. And then we have the accessories, which is what we've been mainly focusing on. Um, they're all diamond hose at the moment, and this uses the same sort of idea as the video I made on the RPG accessories and trinkets, how they'd activate in the offhand. Um, so we've made all of these different models, and they all have different effects in the game. Um, the Book of the Dead is probably the sort of favorite model at the moment. It's really awesome and really detailed. Miney did an awesome job with that. Um, we also have Amulet of the Scarab, which is another favorite. Um, so yeah, all these models, Charm of Hearts I really like, Mirror of Positive Reinforcement. And so these will be held in the offhand by pressing F, and they won't show up in the in the offhand. So they'll be sort of like a, a trinket or an accessory which provides an effect of some sort. Um, so we have a bunch of other ones here as well, and I'll be adding more and more. We've actually got a whole really long list of ideas that we've been coming up for the last like few months now so i'm really excited to be working on this but obviously this is a more long-term project um but anyway let's actually talk about how we made all of these okay so here i am inside a voxel editor called cubicle and this is actually the same program that we use to create the models for the fan fright game um, which is the game that Jacksepticeye actually ended up playing on his channel. Um, I'll leave a link to that video in the description if you want to watch that. Um, but anyway, this is a model that Miney made. Um, it's the Winged Axe, it's one of the weapons. And we're going to export this as an OBJ and then import it into Cubic and then basically put it into the game. So. Obviously you don't have to use Cubicle because it is a paid program, but you can use other voxel editors. I'm sure there are loads out there. You can probably also use Blender for that matter as long as you make them all um, the same sized cubes and everything. Um, but first things first, we're actually going to sort of take images of all the different faces. Um, and this just allows us to have the proper textures rather than having a texture for each sort of pixel, which is what we actually had in the past. So Cubicle actually has this function sort of built in, uh, it has a render setting, so I'm going to zoom out like that, click render, and then we're actually going to take sort of images of each face. So this is going to be winged axe front, and I'm just going to copy that for now, winged axe front. Um, and X back. So now we're going to go ahead and exit render mode and get this model ready for exporting it as an OBJ. Now Cubic is very fussy about how it wants the OBJ file to look. It wants to treat it as a cube, so in this case this model it would elongate these sides so it would look like a cube. And we don't want that, we want it to be sort of pixel perfect. So we're going to create an empty matrix around this model and we're going to keep it a 32 by 32 by 32 size. Um, you can do either 16, 64, um, 32 or 128 in size for importing OBJs to cubic. So we're gonna do 32 because that's the size of this model. And then we're going to go inside this matrix, uh, like that. And we're just going to put some voxels in the two corners, like that. 
um, activate parent and now you can see that's the sort of boundary box that we've created inside that so now it's going to import the whole thing um, correctly so I'm just going to do file export as wavefront obj and I'm just going to export it to desktop for now and that's that part done so now let's move on to cubic so here we've got cubic open now and you can see here we have the obj file so we're going to import that um, you can see there's the resolution settings 8 16 32 64 or 128 um, ours is 32 so we're going to import that um, and we also have the material files here as well which are used with some programs like unity for example um, but Cubic doesn't know how to interpret them, so we may as well just delete them. Um, and I'm going to set this as my custom workspace. So I have the material manager and all the elements on the right. And you can see that now our model is imported exactly as we had it laid out. We can now delete the two sort of pixels we used as the bounding box. And we can start importing some of our textures. So uh, we're going to delete the default textures and import our doo -doo 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 -doo, voxels, assets, Minecraft, textures, voxel, and start importing our textures for the axe. So we've got the front, back, bottom, top, side one, and side two. Now these are probably going to be offset a little so we will probably have to use GIMP to edit them um, but that's fine it doesn't take too long so we're going to actually just highlight all of it all of the elements and do right click textures customize and I usually do two at a time just to make it easier so it's east is going to be our back so we're going to do winged axe back and west is going to be our front okay so you can see already it's not lined up perfectly it just needs to be moved up a pixel um so let's just open this with oops wrong thing so let's just open this with gimp okay and then I'm just going to bring it up a pixel like that, export it, um, and I'll do that with the back one as well. Okay, so that's all done. The bottom and top may still need to be edited, so I'm going to leave that open for now. In fact, I know the bottom will have to be because of the way the default UV is laid out. Um, so we're going to open the front texture again and it should update all the textures. So you can see that now the front and back are in the correct positions which is awesome. So now we're going to do the two sides so we're going to select the north not the north sorry we're going to do textures customize north as side that would be side one I believe and then side two is that right I can't see I think they're the other way around uh, textures customize s2 s1 yep that's right okay now here you can get to see the flaw of this method, the only sort of flaw that this method has, and that is that um, sort of when a pixel is behind another pixel, it's going to use that texture. So for example, here you can see the sort of texture for this part of the axe is overlapped here when it should just be gray like the rest. So this is an example of where you'd have to manually edit it. So I'm just going to go ahead and go into the UV like this. Um, and I'm just going to set the south 
and north for this one to the front and sides. So let me find it there. Um, textures, customize, winged X front and winged X back. Okay, so now that we've fixed the two sides, or at least mostly, I might have to do a bit more to them uh, later, but we have to do the top and bottom now. So we're going to select all of this, do textures, customize, um, set the up to top and the down to bottom. Oops. Click OK and just check that it's all aligned properly. So the up one seems to be fine. Um, is the down one okay? Let's just bring this down to focus on the bottom. Okay, yeah, the bottom one looks okay as well, which is weird because usually I have to flip it um, in GIMP, and that's because of the way that the um, UV is done. Usually the bottom UV is backwards. You can see how it starts over here instead of down here. Um, oh well, it works, so I'm not going to change it, but you might have to flip it in GIMP or something. Um, i got to fix these again, so let's find... Uh, here it is. Uh, textures, customize. I believe this one was back and front. I'll change them up a bit later, I think. Um, but that's the X pretty much done. And this process might look sort of tedious, and it is a bit tedious, but I guarantee you it's a lot quicker in the long run if you want to create voxel models that use a lot of different colors. You can see Miney's added a bit of detail on the sort of winged bits of different colors. It's a lot quicker for sort of designing um, the models rather than doing the process of literally just dragging countless cubes over and over and over and setting them to different colors and all that. It's just a lot easier. Um, so now we've pretty much got the model done. So I just have to do the display settings and then we'll pretty much have it ready. Um, so I'll probably fast forward all of this um, and then I'll get back to you when all of this is done. Okay, I am back in Minecraft now, and you can see I have the axe, and it looks awesome. Um, I might have to mess with the sort of swing, sort of the first person view, because the swing doesn't look that great. Um, but the swing doesn't look that great with the normal axes either, um, probably due to the attack um, speed setting or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's basically one of the weapons done. Looks pretty awesome, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, Miney does an excellent job of making these models in Cubicle. Um, I for one am not very good at using Cubicle. To me, it doesn't make much sense, but he seems to have a knack for it. So we work pretty well together. He sort of makes the models, sends them to me, and I do all the sort of texturing and display sizing and then exporting it into Minecraft and just sort of cleaning up the model if there's any um, bits that don't look right. Um, and I also made it so it won't show in the offhand just like all the other accessories just because I think when you're fighting you don't want something there sort of blocking your view kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I realize this video might not interest a lot of you but it's useful for me at least to keep sort of a record of how to do these things in case I ever forget or anything. And also for if any other people, you know, want to try doing voxel models or anything like that. Um, but I'll do some more sort of normal models and not normal models, normal videos. And I'll get back to modeling Minecraft soon as well. Um, but that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.